Hello all, welcome to People's TV. In this video we will learn how to do animation in SketchUp with V-Ray and how to get high resolution rendered images. After camera settings in V-Ray 3.4, we will learn about render output settings. We can access many output settings like dimensions of render output image, saving the image and animation in it. If there is a difference in aspect ratio between the viewport and image size, then save frame under dimensions in render output toggles the save frame overlay on and off. The save frame will be disabled when we match the viewport aspect ratio in custom mode, due to which the rendered image will exactly match the viewport size or viewport aspect. Save image option under render output enables you to set or change the file path. File path sets the image output location and name. File type sets the image file type. Animation section will only appear in the asset editor once the scene tab has been created. Time segment under animation section selects which part of the animation to render as individual frames. If you select entire animation, it will render the entire animation as individual frames. Frame range under animation section allows section of only certain frames to be rendered. Motion blur under animation section enables motion blur. Let me show you with examples how to create photorealistic animation and walkthroughs. First of all, under render output on the save frame button, it will show you the exact size of the image with aspect ratio on screen. You can change the size of the image accordingly. Set the aspect ratio as you need. It is very important to give the save image location for the rendered images to go. It will save the images with the numbers which will help in making the video out of it. Make sure the animation button is on under render output and in time segment select entire animation. It will automatically take 30 frames per second. Before starting anything, make sure that the scene delay under animation settings is set to 0 and the scene transition is set to 1 seconds. You can also add or remove a scene you want in animation. If you don't want any particular scenes in your animation, then you can remove it from the scene settings. Now, V-Ray will not render those particular scenes and you will get rendered images of rest of the scenes. It's helpful when you're creating a walkthrough and have many scenes in your model. You can go by few scenes at a time. Now let's start the rendering of scenes. As the rendering starts, you can see in the scene tabs above, V-Ray will go through all of the scenes and then start rendering frame by frame automatically. You just have to click the rendering button once and your work is done. If you want to see how many frames V-Ray going to render, then just go to the time range and animation section, select frame range and click on get animation range option. It will automatically tell you the number of frames going to be rendered like in this case. It is going to be 180 frames. I have already rendered 180 frames for you as an example. You can see each frame is automatically saved in with particular number in it. All rendered frame are arranged in proper sequence. Now last and final work to do. We have to combine those frames together in a suitable speed to convert those images into video form. There are many softwares to do that like Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Premiere, Adobe Photoshop CC etc. I will be using Adobe Photoshop CC. There is so little work to do here. 
just click the file tab above then go to open option a browsing window will open up now go to the folder you have saved your rendered frames select the first image that is numbered as 0 remember you have to select only one image you can see in the browsing window itself there is a checkbox of image sequence tick mark the checkbox and click open when you do that a window will pop up asking about frame rate set it to 60 or you can customize your frame rate as well it is recommended to go max 60 frames per second when you are done with the frame rate then click ok you will see in your timeline below the images are arranged in a sequence which are depiction of motion you can see the duration of animation is 3 seconds You can increase the duration by slowing the speed of the animation. As we set the speed to 50% less, we can see the time of animation can be increased to 6 seconds. That is just double of previous. You can use this trick in your walkthroughs where you want to speed up your animation and where you want to slow down. Now when we play our animation you can see the speed is slowed down. We can now see our model in a more better way. Now we want this image sequence to be converted into video format. So that it can be easily presented anywhere. That can also be done in Adobe Photoshop with ease. Just go to the render video option on the bottom left of your timeline and click it. You can see it has started exporting the image sequence into video format. A window will pop up before final exporting for selecting different constraints of the video like the folder you want the video to be saved, start and end frames of the video, size and ratio of the video and others. So select accordingly and render and your video will be exported to the desired folder. You can now open your saved video format from the folder and can play it in any media player. Ok guys, so that is all about rendered image output and animation in V-Ray. Watch other parts to know about more rendering parameters in V-Ray. Find me on social networks on the addresses given on the top of the video for discussions. Also like, subscribe and share if this video helped you. Thanks.